I've been going over the practice tests that College Board has provided and I've been trying to like reverse engineer these things so that I can create more questions for you and I'm going to give you access to free material in today's video. Before we do, I want to talk about what has changed in the digital SAT and how you can better prepare yourself. So what are the biggest changes on the new exam? The biggest change by far is that the exam is much shorter, which means you can do a lot of preparation in less time. The new digital SAT is down to 2 hours and 24 minutes at most. And if you finish a section early, you can go ahead and start taking a break. They don't force you to sit there anymore. The biggest changes on the test are in the English portion. and That's where a lot of my material is focused. Instead of having a separate English reading and writing portion, you now just have one portion dedicated to the English language skills. And paragraphs are extremely important now because you will never have to do a long reading ever again. For every question, there's a paragraph. For every paragraph, there's a question. It is literally one paragraph, one question, one paragraph, one question. Now you're just focusing on one very specific point from a whole paragraph. The best way to prepare for this kind of test is to focus on the types of questions that you can get. How many types of questions are there on the new digital SAT English portion? I've identified 10 types of questions and I've created exercises for each one of them. Some question types appear more frequently than others and so what I did was take all the practice tests from College Board and use those to kind of figure out a rough pattern. How often do certain types of questions come up? Vocabulary questions literally make up 30% of the test. Just simple fill in the blank, choose the right word questions. You need to spend more time practicing your vocabulary. I would recommend downloading Google Dictionary plugins so that you can just double click on any word you see online so you can get the definition right away. When you're reading things, pay attention to words you don't know. Use flashcards. Flashcards are like a great way to help you practice your vocabulary. After vocabulary, punctuation questions represent another 17% of the test. So just between vocabulary and punctuation alone, that's about half of your grade on the English portion of the SAT. From there, it's a bit of a mix. There are sentence completion exercises which basically just ask you to fill in the blank with a whole sentence instead of just a single word. I saw those in about 10% of the questions. There's a class of questions that I like to call supporting claims where basically it's a scientific text and then they ask you which statement would best support the claims made in the text. Grammar questions are back and they're still really easy. You'll probably see a few questions that look a lot like the old SAT questions about charts or graphs. Literature questions. Instead of having a long literary text to read and then a bunch of questions about the characters and the setting, you're going to get just a single small excerpt, one paragraph of literature and a quick question probably about one of the characters or maybe even just the main idea. Poetry can now appear on the SAT. I've seen Shakespeare's sonnets used as the base material for a question. Paired passages aren't dead yet. Even though you don't have to read two very long paired passages, there are still some questions that give you two short paragraphs and then ask you questions for like they're asking you what would this author say to this author about this. I only saw two or three of these on any any given test. I saw a couple of other questions about the function of a sentence, like basically asking what is the purpose of the second sentence in this paragraph. But there's a whole new kind of question here in the digital SAT, one that I like to call note taking. This question, very idealistically, assumes that there is a student paying attention during a lecture and taking notes. They write down six bullet points and then the question will ask you to sort of combine information from the different bullet points to produce a response to a hypothetical question on a test. I thought these were pretty easy because you don't really need to look at the notes or memorize anything. Just look at the question and then find the answer that best does what the question wants you to do. We need to talk now about the next big difference between the old SAT and the new SAT, which is adaptive testing. Whether your test is easier or harder is going to depend directly on your performance on the test. Both the English and math parts are divided into two sections or modules. And when you complete the first module, the program downloads new questions for the second module. I deliberately tried to do the practice tests both perfectly and wrong and somewhere in the middle just to see what would happen to that second module. And let me tell you people, it changes drastically. If you do a very good job on the first module, like a near perfect result, you're going to get much harder questions in the second half. What does a hard module look like? Hard modules generally have about the same amount of vocabulary questions, but the words used are much more advanced. Certain types of questions kind of disappear entirely. I didn't see any of the function 
of a sentence questions in a hard module. There were less note taking and data questions as well on the second module. There were a lot more sentence completion and supporting claims questions on my hard module too. I suspect these are because they take longer to answer. Supporting claims and sentence completion questions have longer answer choices that you really need to read carefully, so these questions typically take longer for you to answer. Conversely, I saw a lot less of grammar, and those are really quick questions that are generally pretty easy. But all that changes when I deliberately butchered the exam to get an easy module. There were way more questions about punctuation and grammar, but they were much easier to handle than your typical question. I saw a lot more literary comprehension questions on the easy module too, but the questions themselves were very simple. It was always just, what's the main idea? Or how is this character's attitude? And it's really easy to just look for some keywords and kind of answer the questions. Hard modules are a lot more likely to give you scientific texts or historic texts with larger vocabularies, and so they could be a little more complicated for you to read. Is the digital SAT easier or harder? Well, in my opinion, I think it's easier. I was able to finish the test a lot faster because I didn't have to read entire passages and then figure out which parts of them were important. Because you're only working with a single paragraph, all you really have to do is look at the question and then determine if you even need to read that paragraph. Punctuation, grammar, sentence, function, fill in the blank vocabulary, you never need to read the whole paragraph. And this means that you can answer some questions in as little as two or three seconds. I recorded my entire screen when I was resolving one of the practice tests, and I would show it to you here, but College Board took down my videos last time I did this, and because College Board is a bunch of dicks, I'm sure they're going to do it again if I put that stuff up here. It's their fault for even making it possible to screen capture in the first place. You can't screen capture the Duolingo app, I know, because I took the Duolingo and I tried and it wouldn't let me. It appears invisible to OBS and even on screen sharing like Zoom, but apparently College Board doesn't have enough money in its over $1 billion bank account to implement a simple feature like that into its Blue Book application. So I have the footage, but I won't be sharing it with you today. F you, College Board. You're gonna be dead soon anyway. Subscribe if you want to learn more about that. So how do you actually prepare for this test? Unfortunately, College Board has decided to use all of the international students as guinea pigs. Isn't they cute? But international students right now have nothing, and I don't want that to be the case. The whole reason I made this channel is to give you guys access to the information you need, and for this channel to be a resource, and my goal is to make it easier for you guys to get a good score on this test. In the description below, there's gonna be a link to a folder where you'll be able to view and download those files and check them out for yourself. The best way to prepare yourself for this test is to practice specific types of questions and use strategies for each one. When you can quickly identify what kind of question you're dealing with and then implement the right strategy, you can improve your test taking time considerably and that'll give you the extra time you might need for some of those harder questions. We've already started doing our SAT group class for the digital SAT here in Peru and I'm actually teaching it because I want to put my own material to the test. All the material I'm going to give you is for the English portion of the test and there's two reasons for that. One is that I suck at math and two is because the math portion hasn't really changed. Now granted, I still gotta make some money because this channel certainly doesn't, so my classes that I'm gonna be teaching are pay to play, but the information, the material that I am putting together is still gonna be freely available for you. If you are interested in ever getting into one of our classes, we usually have some space. Go to prepwithscore.com, hit the WhatsApp button, and you will actually be talking with me on the internet. Or you can leave a comment below and ask me for some more information on how to get set up with the course. Thank you so much for supporting this channel by being here. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you next week.